Hi everyone and welcome to Pro Tools Answers, where your friendliest Pro Tools experts on the internet demonstrate and elaborate on your Pro Tools questions put to the community in Avid's official Facebook support forum. Please welcome Master Instructor Anders Motz. Hello. And the master of all master of all master instructors, Mr. Andy Hagerman. How you doing? And myself, Dave, we take you on a deep journey into the workings of Pro Tools technique and ethos to help the user community get the best out of Pro Tools. Um, in this week's episode, we're not taking questions today. We're going to be looking at probably my most favorite release so far. I'm so freaking happy with uh, Pro Tools 2022.9. 20, uh, which month was this released in, chaps? <clears throat> Uh, nine. Yeah. <laughs> the ninth month. month. Nine, yeah. yeah, yeah. Someone popped up on the forum the other day saying, "Did I? Did I miss? <laughs> did I miss version eight <laughs> point eight? I was like, "No, dude, you didn't. It's fine." <laughs> um, so, Great question, though. <laughs> it's, yeah. it, was a good question. <laughs> it was an easy one to answer. Yep. Um, so we're going to go through all of the uh, the new features of twenty twenty two point nine. Some very very cool stuff in there. Um, and I want to go out on a limb and say, and this has been in Pro Tools for a while. The Melodyne thing has been in Pro Tools for a while. The fact that it, uh, Avid and Solemony joined up and provided uh, Melodyne for free as part of the install, uh, the, part of the subscription. I think that is one of the things alone that made Pro Tools a very, very viable door for everybody. Um, yeah, it's um, we started you know, integrating Melodyne into what we were doing with the um, audio to MIDI conversion. Mm. So not that long ago, but you know, if you're, if you kind of watch how partnerships work, you, you could kind of see where things were going to go mm. and, and it, and that's where they went. Yeah. So yeah. we're all good. It's great. And what's the one thing that a majority of music people will do? They, they need to be tuning the vocals these days. And the alternative is if you don't have any pitch correction stuff included, which I think is all of them. Um, Logic gives you flex pitch, but have you heard flex pitch? It's like, yes. it's like, nails, on, yeah, it's like nails on a chalkboard. Um, and, you know, bundling in Melodyne with Pro Tools, what, what a move. You know, want to move, and 2022 has integrated it even further um, by building it into the system with a bit of a deep end integration that I'm sure one of you guys are just just grizzling to talk about. I I'm sure you're the Melodyne guy, Dave. You usually do Melodyne stuff, so uh, you are the one. Oh, okay. I want. I want you know, to... I'll be honest. I I I've used Melodyne maybe a handful of times, three or four. Maybe only because, um, and only that few times because it's such a pain to work with from a workflow perspective. Mm, it that you, know, was, you have to kind of get all your other stuff. You was well, right. Mm. You have to get all your other stuff done, and then you melodyne things, and and then from that point things are kind of committed. Mm. Um, that you know the the ARA two integration just breaks that, and and now I'm just like not only am I using Melodyne more, but I'm like now I'm thinking you know what Melodyne Studio might be interested. In. Yeah, yeah. Do you do you want to show it, Andy, or do you, shall I drive um, from us? You're, you're the, the Melodyne guy, that right? Uses it the absolute yeah. most. Okay. Uh, I do use it a lot because my singing is shite. <laughs> Actually, no, it's no, not. I, it's it's I, not. Unfortunately, I, I, I very rarely record uh, singers these days uh, or work with singers at all. Mm. So um, most of the stuff that I do is without any singing on them. Yeah. So the yeah, as this Andy said, the, the the workflow originally was to have Melodyne hosted on the insert, and then you'd have to transfer the audio into Melodyne. We've done shows on this in the past, and mm -hmm. then you're essentially syncing Melodyne with Pro Tools. And they have to run together to be able to work, and it was, it, it wasn't the worst thing in the world. You know, you you can once you get used to a workflow, you can make it work. Um, but what uh, uh, Avid have done now is they've built Melodyne into the Elastic Audio section. So to uh, to do any pitch correction on your vocals on the track, all we have to do is kick up Melodyne um, in uh, the Elastic Audio menu and it loads up as a dock uh, underneath everything and we have all of the the stuff that we would normally be using in, uh, in Melodyne available to us right here. Uh, can anyone to talk about what ARA is. 
Because yeah, I mean, ARA. You, it, you could it, definitely articulate an, it better than I could. It's it's a protocol that allows for the the DAW to communicate with the plugin in a more substantial way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, especially for things that that do clip based work like like Melodyne does. You know, you need a little bit more communication between the DAW mm. than you would, for example, an EQ. Uh, and ARA kind of kind of brings that in. There's you know there's other plugins that use ARA, and we're just getting you know you know if, if you know if we want to speculate, you know it's possible that we're just getting started with with ARA too. But the first one, obviously, and probably the most common one, is is with with Melodyne. Mm. So we can now do all of the editing essentially uh, on our timeline. We don't have to transfer it into a separate plugin. Uh, Pro Tools will just take all of the uh, all, all of the notes. We can do all of the editing in there, and we don't have to use a separate app anymore, which is really nice. And what I've what I've been finding with this is that uh, a lot of the stuff that's in my usual versions of Melodyne are in this version of Melodyne as well. Um, it's it, the same version; it's just a different way of accessing. I was about to ask that question because uh, I'm yeah. using the the uh, Melodyne Studio, I think it is uh, Melodyne right, so Melodyne Melodyne Editor. So that version the doc will take in my version of Melodyne. So if people are using so, the standard version, it will just so give let's them talk, those features, right? Let's, let's talk versions. So if you if you don't have Melodyne already, now when you, you know, with Pro Tools, you get Melodyne Essentials, which mm -hmm. actually is, is pretty good right on its own. Um, but for you, if you've got um, Melodyne Editor and then, you know, the top of the of the Apex is Melodyne Studio, mm -hmm. whatever version of Melodyne that you have, you upgrade it to the latest version of that mm -hmm. and and that supports ARA2 and and that's what you'll see. So I've got Melodyne Essentials because I don't use it as much as, as you do. I'm gonna <laughs> and I'm <laughs> definitely thinking mm. about buying studio and when I do then when I when I upgrade then that's the version I'll see in that docked editor. Yeah. Very this is just so so exciting. Um very, very happy with this. Um uh, yeah fantastic. Yeah it's really good. Moving on to uh, the next exciting feature. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. I love this. Uh, this is pro this is something that's going to change a lot of people's workflows for us um, when we're working with Pro Tools um, and apps like Camtasia, and especially for teachers who are wanting to deliver the Pro Tools uh, audio through Zoom. Uh, does anyone use Skype anymore uh, or, or Teams? Um, or if you're collaborating with other people uh, over the internet, we can we can now have a separate uh, or we can connect separate audio drivers, additional audio drivers, um, in the same way that we could with uh, the aggregate I/O, right? <clears throat> yeah. So this is one of those things that is is available only in in a Mac based uh, Pro Tools mm -hmm. system. So mm -hmm. that's the first thing we gotta we gotta clarify. You're right. But mm -hmm. yes, um, one of the things that makes this a little bit different is that the the aggregate driver is list is is limited only to um, core audio drivers so mm -hmm. if you were using for example an HDX system um, the aggregate driver would not be available to you mm -hmm. this lets you add any core audio driver to your current playback engine yeah and in my example here I've got my HD Omni and my HD native system selected as my mm -hmm. primary uh, playback engine but to be able to get audio out to the likes of Ladiocast for uh, for transferring audio through Zoom, um, and I, when I'm working with students on Zoom, I'm sending them the full quality audio, but I'm I'm monitoring my sound through the VSX plugin, right, right so that I can hear the lows uh, a, a lot clearer, um, and obviously don't want to send students the VSX signal because it just sounds ridiculous without the headphones so i have a, a lot of different outputs happening uh and i can run that alongside my uh, my hd omni if i want to and it's done using the auxiliary io which is very cool yeah and one other thing that i think will have a huge implication f for everyone uh, using dolby atmos as an in-the-box solution mm -hmm. where you have the internal render now you can have hdx being your uh, your playback engine use the benefits of the HDX card, get synchronization from Sync X, Sync HD, mm -hmm. and and still have the uh, uh, the uh, the Dolby Audio Bridge as an auxiliary auxiliary engine sending that on to 
mm. uh, to the render, which is huge. Yep. So there's there's two things to, to keep in mind that, that make it, I think, a little bit different than, than, the, um, than the aggregate I.O. One is that when you add, and this is important to know, when you add auxiliary I.O., the latency of those I.O.s will probably not match the latency of your primary, your, your active, yep. your, your mm -hmm. real playback engine, which means that you, you're probably not going to want to use it for recording and playback systems that are, 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 are dependent on timing. Mm -hmm. For monitoring, no problem. You know, so for yep. sending out to Zoom and all that stuff, for, for, for uh, Dolby, Atmos workflows, all that stuff's great. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. But for, you, you probably want to be careful of how you use it. The other one that I wanted to mention is in addition to the Dolby audio bridge, we've got the Pro Tools audio bridge. And this kind of is sim uh, similar to you know what Soundflower used to be, what Black Hole is now, mm -hmm. um, a couple of other products out there that, that are basically you know audio pipelines from one application to another. Mm. The difference between Dolby Audio Bridge and the Pro Tools Audio Bridge and all those other ones is that both the Dolby Audio Bridge and the Pro Tools Audio Bridge clock off your interface. So, mm -hmm. so your timing and, and the quality of your audio and the clicks and pops and all that stuff, that's not going to be an issue with this, and it certainly can be, as anybody who's ever used Black Hole or any of the others, what you, it, you can get timing issues aplenty, and you're not going to get that here. So if you're using Pro Tools with something like uh, Zoom or something like that, mm -hmm. then what you want to use is the audio bridge, because this solves problems that used to exist for us. Well, exactly. And we, you know, we, we record our Pro Tools audio into Camtasia for recording the show every so often. And the mm -hmm. way that I'm linking it is with the, the free Ladiocast mixture, which is, I, I think is just fantastic. And we can see here that the Pro Tools audio bridge is available it links that as well um, as an input and as an output and I'm sending the audio into Camtasia right now through my mic my Mac uh, Mac mic um, which I've just noticed I probably shouldn't be doing because um, I've got this right here uh, and it's being the audio is being sent through into Camtasia using the audio bridge so it's not just specifically for a Pro Tools environment it's available system wide that's right. Which is beautiful. Um, another quick thing to mention is that when I when I was looking at this, I was primarily th excited about it because of being able to send audio out of Pro Tools. So I was only ever really considering it as an output option. Um, but we can also have it to link up additional inputs as well. Um, you can't run them concurrently, uh, but you you know we can set Black Hole sixteen channel for example as an input and it makes the uh, those inputs available for you on the matrix same with the outputs it just adds an extra uh, matrix for you and this is a really nice thing that the aggregate driver wasn't able to do it wasn't able to recognize the specific interfaces that were connected to it it would just represent them as a as a ran a, a generic list of inputs and outputs and you had to work out which one was which <laughs> This version doesn't do. I also doesn't do that. It's, yeah, it's, it's phenomenally it's cool. Mm. Um, what would so, be your next feature? Um, how about the quantize? I think that's one of the things that for musicians, yeah, uh, it's it, it's it's not it's it's not flashy, but man, is it going to be convenient for some people? Let me move totally, this. yeah, go for so, it. Andy. So up at the top there, I'll let, since since we're looking at Dave's machine, we can continue looking at that. There's a new cluster uh, up in the the edit window toolbar, and that's your quantization cluster. I think it's called quantization. If you could go to the pop up menu, Dave, I'm not exactly 100 percent sure. Uh, no, in the pop up menu, the the little circular button in the upper left hand corner of the edit window. Sorry, of course. Let's yes. See what that's called. Quantization. Uh, quantization quantization right. controls. There you go. Um, and, and basically, what you can do there without going anywhere else is you can you can change your grid, you can change your swing, you can change your strength, and then to quantize something, you just hit the, the Q button, the little the little guy right there, and, and that mm -hmm. applies it. Um, if you want to get to to more, um, you know, and, and for a lot of people, that's you know, you just you know, you you're, you're quantizing sections based upon a consistent number of criterion. If you want to go any further than, than the, the, the controls that you have there, then that little gear right there, as Dave is showing you, mm -hmm. opens up the event quantize and it closes the event quantize window as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can change things like strength or randomize or whatever else that you want to do. Yeah, great feature. Uh, I really love having that there. Uh, what about the uh, 
uh, one other feature or a new version of Pro Tools again, Pro Tools <laughs> intro. Can, and this can, is can, I, can we hold off on that one just for quick because I think that's the last one. Um, okay. Sorry, the, yeah, we'll, sorry, we'll want to edit this out. Yeah. Can we talk about the time code slider? I thought it, Andy. I thought Anders would love this one. <clears throat> right, I thought so too. Do you have video up, Anders? Okay, so um, so if you're using Pro Tools Ultimate, this is one of those features that's only available in in Pro Tools Ultimate. Um, you have had in the past, um, most recently, the ability to add a, a time code window. And I've got this video specifically so you can see there's a difference between what Pro Tools is overlaying, which is the top number here, which, which lines up with my uh, actual timeline, and the, the number that was actually burned into the video file. Now, you've had the ability to change the size, you can change the color, why would I change it to black? Because you're not going to see anything. There we go. It's going to do that. Um, you can change the background opacity. Now we're really not going to see anything. But we've added two new sliders um, at the bottom here, and that's the positional slider. So you can you can move it over um, left to right. You can move it up and down to suit whatever whatever you want to do there. And uh, you can see obviously here if I wanted to. I could I could overlay it on top of the the previous burn in and and that kind of removes the confusion. But yeah, but it's a small thing. Again, it's kind of like the quantized window. It's like it's not it's not hugely impressive. It's not hugely complex. But you're going to wind up using it. Um, and and these are the the small things that I I think go underappreciated for their usefulness. It's a quality uh, of life so, upgrade. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. But, but, but that is, uh, I mean, this feature is something that is used by a lot of professional and that uh, some of the professionals that I am in contact with were uh, really disappointed to see that there was no right. video output on the new Avid Sync X where you could, uh, where you can burn, burn in your time code, which the old Sync HD used to do. And now mm -hmm. they've replaced it with this feature instead, which does it from the proto side as a software uh, solution. And I think this is great because it's, available to everyone instantly mm -hmm. and so flexible. So really and there's, there's another one that kind of, again, again, along with the kind of the more professional quality, before we get into the, mm -hmm. the final uh, Pro Tools intro uh, feature um, is, and I'm not sure you guys even know that, we now have 32,000 <laughs> markers. I, I'm, 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 so glad you, I'm so glad you brought this up because this was the thing that made my mind go, <laughs> I'm so glad that I can now reference a song structure using 32,000 right. markers. Because we do Because 999 was clearly not enough. No, no. And, and for us and for people that produce prog, you know, this is the release for you. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I like to put a marker on every notes, attack, decay, and release time. <laughs> Yeah, and you will still have some left over for other things. Have... <laughs> uh, a couple things. Um, obviously, um, backward compatibility is is one of those issues. So yeah. one of the things that 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 we've done in Pro Tools that I think is is very conscientious is if you again how 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 common is this going to be? I don't know. But if you once you get to the thousandth marker, I can't believe I'm even saying this. Once you get to your thousandth marker, you'll get a message saying that that this can be incompatible with older versions of Pro Tools. Yeah. And, and you can go up to 32,000. Awesome. I, I, have, I have a question. But you don't right. have to start with that marker, right? You, I mean, you don't have to start at one. You can start at 1,000 if you like to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> I, I have a question because it says markers, but is, does it mean memory location? Memory locations, yeah. Memory locations, yeah. Mm. Yeah, memory locations. Okay, well, that, that could also make a difference because you can have... We we could use thirty two thousand nine hundred ninety memory locations for oh. for references. Am I getting my maths wrong? Um, and just ten markers for song structure. Okay, yeah, thirty one thousand. Maybe yeah, yeah, but I don't know. It's yeah, it's too I, it's early in the morning. What can I say? Yeah, there you go. But yeah, so so um, so so that limit for those few who have been hitting it has been. I think effectively removed. <laughs> uh, but, but I think there, there. I mean, there is use cases for everything. And I've had sure. people being di disappointed with only 999 markers, and uh, that, of course, has to do with how you're making your markers and what they should contain and and what they are referring to. Sure. And uh, so, who was that uh, one? Who was that one guy, Anders? 
No, I've I've had a couple of no, people no, I've, I've, I've have, having the need of having like markers with more than four uh, with more than three figures in them because of their situation and how they work and how their scenes are okay. are distinguished from each other and so on. So you wanted yeah. so people wanted four figures of markers. That's right. Yeah. So right. Avid has I, given us five. Five figures. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you know, just, the interesting in thing is, is, is we've only, we, have, we only have 99 Windows configurations. And that's one of those limitations. I don't think I've heard anybody say, oh, I really need 100. So, uh, you know, window configurations and memory locations, in my mind, are kind of sibling features. And, uh, and, and I think, though, people will really go down the, you know, the, the road of using a lot of markers well, and memory locations. They don't use as many Windows configurations. Well, yeah, no. but isn't Windows configurations a part of memory locations? So you, you can, you can not, make it, it can be. It can be a part of it. But, but you only have nine. You, you can link or tr maybe trigger is a better word. You can trigger a Windows configuration from a memory location, right? <clears throat> but but there's only 99 of those okay. window configurations. And, and to be honest, let's, you know, there's not that many windows that, you know, a hundred different configurations are gonna be highly desirable. But but that's one of those things. It's, it's a limitation that people haven't come up with. No, because you can obviously have multiple different memory locations on different parts of your timeline linking to the same window the same configuration, window configuration. Yep. so so it's it's it makes it void <laughs> or how, yeah, how yeah, yeah yeah it yeah. renders it render, renders it kind of moot yeah, yeah. all right so uh, something that isn't moot then i think andy's moot. Re really uh, excited to talk about pro tools intro yeah 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 pro tools intro so, i think that's a great thing so let's let's take a let's sit right down and you'll hear a tale um so about a year ago um, Avid discontinued Pro Tools first um, because it was ha it was cracked. I guess I think I can say that. We can say cracked. I think so we can a, say that now. Yeah, I think we say that now. <clears throat> um, and so so it's not yeah, it was. Um, and and so it's like okay, it's gone, 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 gone. And let's let's just just, it, just just point out was it cracking so they could get it or cracking so they could open up all of the features in Pro. I can't imagine somebody <laughs> cracking a free application so they can get it for free. Um, it was opening up all I, the feature sets, right? I, honestly, I don't know what the nature of it was, but but they they cracked it. Uh, Andy, and uh, I, before it, we continue on, I mean, are you sure you want to, to be speaking about this? We can. Well, oh, I don't we, think we, it's a secret anymore. We okay. we can we can cut it out if we need to. Okay. But but but. The, in the in the time after Pro Tools first was was cancelled, mm -hmm. um, we've had a chance to take a look and see you know what did people like about it, what did people not like about it, and 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 I think there were a lot of people who really didn't like Pro Tools because because they didn't like Pro Tools first, first mm -hmm. right? Um, and 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 myself and I you know this is just one man's opinion. I always kind of felt that Pro Tools first was not really representative of any other version of Pro Tools. It was yeah. it was limited in ways that Pro Tools simply wasn't mm. and so i'm pretty pleased with with this new version of pro tools for a lot of reasons first of all it's a version of pro tools so you install it and it's a it's a it's a you know it's a version of pro tools just like any other which is going to help us keep you know the it's, the the feature sets lined up it's part um, of the unified you know, installer it's part <clears throat> of the unified installer um it is iLock. Uh, protected. Sorry, it's pace protected, mm -hmm. but you can have a you can you can license it um, without an iLock key yeah. and without an internet connection. So you don't have to be connected to the internet all the time. You don't have to have a physical iLock. So it truly is something you can you can go for no mm. financial commitment. And and the other thing too is that it's not limited. And this is what I like most about it. It's not limited to cloud based projects. Yeah. You can actually do work as a session. In fact, you, you can't can even only. start a project. You can be you can be invited to a project, yeah. right? Yeah. So if, so if somebody if, if somebody you're collaborating with has 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 a, a cloud plan or they've got you know they've got the ability to create a project and invite people, you can be invited to a cloud based mm -hmm. project, but you can't instigate one, which is fine for a lot <clears> of people. And and I I don't have the um, you still need the paid the, the Avid link, uh, Avid Cloud, to be able to do that, though, right? Not if you're invited. 
Okay. Because you you it's you use whenever you have a project, you're using the the project owner's space. Okay. Right. So so it's you know so you can you can be invited to a project and 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 have at it. You're, okay. You're Without golden. subscribing. Great. Okay. Without subscribing. Um, and I just think that it it removes a lot of the things that were frustrating to people mm -hmm. who were just trying to dip their ho their toes into Pro Tools and see if they liked it. They dipped their toes into Pro Tools first, and they thought they wouldn't like Pro Tools because of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And and I think now mm -hmm. this is a good one. I, I I don't have the the specs in front of me. Um, hold on a second. Eight, um, eight audio tracks, eight instrument tracks, and so on. Um, eight. Sorry. Hold yeah. on. Um, yeah. So. So four audio tracks, 36 plugins included, um, the Loop Master sample pack. I'm just reading off a, off a yeah. board here. I thought, um, was, I thought it was eight audio tracks. I was with you. Eight audio tracks. I thought it was eight audio tracks. Eight, it is. What it's did I say? Eight. You said four. four. But Oh, sorry. Um, oh, sorry, record four tracks simultaneously. Yeah, mm. okay. uh, yeah so, um, so what people don't realize is, uh, since it's now included in every installer, and if you're on the, a Pro Tools subscription f license, uh, like most people are, and that license expires. Now simply, Pro Tools Intro will open instead of your mm -hmm. your subscribed that you don't have anymore. Um, and I think this is fantastic, and it has a lot of things going for it, especially for schools, because schools were um, among the institutions or, or the, the, mm. the people that were actually using Pro Tools first, uh, like an introduction to DAWs and stuff like that. And now everyone gets a Pro Tools version, basically, that they can use at home or uh, in the school for free. And, and, it gives you a, and it gives you an honest sense yeah. of, of how working in Pro Tools works. Yeah. Um, interestingly enough, it supports ARA. Oh, awesome. wow. It does. The only thing it doesn't do is it doesn't give you Melodyne. So, so with with Pro Tools Artist, Pro Tools Studio, and Pro Tools Ultimate, if you don't have ARA, you get you get Melodyne Essentials. Mm -hmm. If you try to open up, if you try to apply Melodyne in Pro Tools Intro, then you can it'll start you off with a thirty day license, and mm -hmm. then if you like it, then you can you can buy your own license. So you it. can load up the plugin version. Can yeah. Can can you load in third party plugins? Did you say that? Yes. You can because mm -hmm. so that restriction was in Pro Tools first. Yeah. So that's nice. Um, I, I have it a couple. It comes with a lot of the standard Pro Tools plugins, of course, and uh, Expand 2 as a synthesizer and, yep. and so on. And yeah. Every plugin that you own, you can still use in Pro Tools Intro. Does it give you access to the playback engine and I.O. in the same way that normal Pro Tools does? I'm going to have to check, but I think so. Because that was a pain in Pro Tools first. And does it deal with file management in the same way? As yeah, it's the first. same program. Yeah. It, it's definitely using sessions. And you, if you try and open a, a, a normal set, session okay. that has more than eight audio tracks, you will simply be prompted to reduce the track count and it mm. will open up with a reduced tra track okay. count. All the so eight tracks will could, be could available. Yeah. Pro, Pro Tools first was a pain with file management. It would deal with files in a very, very, very different way to Pro Tools. Yep. Um, so if we're dealing with, if it's, if it's, normal Pro Tools with all of the normal protocols, but it's just a very limited feature set. That's just, that, that should that be a great, should be a great introduction to the door for free. <clears throat> Which Pro Tools first, as you said, Andy, it just, it, it, I think it left a bitter taste with a lot of people. If, it, it, it was, it, it was well-intentioned. Mm. It really was. It, it would, it just, and, and you learn by doing right. And, and I think, you know, with, with the opportunity that that just you know having to having to you know shut down Pro Tools first, that that gave us an opportunity to kind of you know sit back and take a look and what was working, what wasn't, what did people like, what did people hate, and let's let's see if we can't improve things. And I think frankly we have, I do. Cool. Um, those are all the main features, aren't there? There there are a bunch of bug fixes along with the re uh, release notes. Oh, it's sure. worth going to have a look at them. Um, something that that seems to have happened in. 22.9 that wasn't in the release notes is that the HD native HDX load up seems to be a little bit more uh, reliable now. I've been struggling with CPU overloads uh, with loading mm. up my HD native tech for, for months. Um, and I've, I've spoken to Avid support about it. They, they said they were aware of it. They're trying to work it out. But so far, um, my HD tech has been loading up without 
the uh, the CPU going atomic. Um, so maybe they've dealt with it and left it out of the release notes, or maybe it was an underground thing, but I'm certainly finding that the HD uh, is more reliable so far. Hopefully that continues and it's not just luck. <laughs> Great. Uh, anything else to mention? No, that's the overview, and, and I, th I think we've discussed that we're going to, you know, go into each one of these in a little bit more depth in, in future shows. I think, you know, all of those features, almost all of them, um, you know, could be a show in, in themselves. They're going to you know, come, come up as Melodyne. questions. They're going to come up as questions at some point, aren't they? So, uh, and that's what we excel in, right? <laughs> we do. We do indeed. Andy's staying quiet. He's on the fence. I'm staying quiet. I, you know, my my records mixed it best. <laughs> well, this, this is this is a question you can definitely get right, Andy. <laughs> okay, we will leave it there, and uh, we will look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Uh, many thanks to Anders. Uh, thank you. And many thanks, many thanks to Andy. You bet. Uh, many thanks to you guys. If you haven't yet done so, head over to uh, ProToolsAnswers.com. You can subscribe over there. You can join our inner circle as well um, if you uh, if you fancy supporting the show and uh, coming to join us in our, our private Discord group and our monthly masterclasses and things. If you haven't yet done so with this video, hit like on it, please, um, and subscribe to our channel so that you and, and then hit the bell icon. You get notified every time we release our new stuff. And um, we will, as I said, we will look forward to seeing you in the next one. Uh, uh, my name's Dave, this is Pro Tools Answers, and Andy, what are we? We're out. <laughs>